BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 98, Getting Motivated to Exercise. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa-quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Well, today we're going to be problem solving a problem that I've seen in my practice for over 30 years, and that is, how do I motivate people to exercise the way they need to exercise so that they'll like it, so that they'll continue, so that they'll stay healthy the rest of their lives. Now that's a huge issue. We all need to exercise, I don't care who we are, but there's a way to exercise that fits your personality. There's a way to exercise that makes you happy about exercising. And luckily, <laughs> luckily, Suzanne Brew wrote this book, which we recommend, The Eight Colors of Fitness. And I use this in my weight loss program in my office. And that's what we're going to talk about today is her way of dividing up exercises by personality types. And luckily, since Brett deals with personality types on a daily basis, we're, uh, we all actually deal with yes, personality types. Yes, we all do. But he's going to help us understand the personality types that we are and our family is, in case there's somebody in your family you just can't get into gear to exercise and who needs it then this will help you understand what kind of personalities there are and what kind of exercise is their favorite and how to motivate them to do it. Well, yeah, the challenge is to figure out, I mean, this is one way of looking at it and people are so resistant and, and they're resistant for a lot of reasons. And, you know, the question that you may want to ask is, well, why is Kathy doing this in her practice? Because she primarily focuses on uh, testosterone and, and hormone replacements. And when you look at the website and you read the material that's there, or if you watch our podcast and you, you see the range of things that we cover, we are talking about lifestyle changes too. We're, we're not just talking about uh, a magical pellet or a pill or right. a drug. It we're, all goes together to make it health. It all comes together. And so one of the things that we consistently emphasize is diet and exercise. And those are two things that people insistently and consistently reject uh, or screw up, they're not able to do it, they don't know why, there, there's so much self-sabotaging that occurs. Underneath that, there's some anger, there's mm -hmm. some frustration, mm -hmm. there's some uh, sense that life is not fair, that they have to grapple with, they have to struggle with. But, so, that, but that also stems from doctors, because I know my husband went to a doctor who I honor and think he's awesome, but he walks out every year, and, and up until the last few years, he'd say, Oh, exercise and lose, and lose weight. Right. And then he'd leave. And With, John's without like, a clue how. John's like, how? Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Right. And of course, I'm his wife, so I'm not able to help. No, you can't, <laughs> you can't treat the same. It's hard to help your husband when, you know, you're married to him. My wife says at home, I don't want therapy from you. I want to fight. <laughs> uh, so I, I do therapy right. with a lot of other people. I can't do it with yeah. her. It, so, so the challenge then is what can we do to understand the frame of the individual, the pattern of the individual, and give them some tools that they are more likely to use. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just give them a global prescription. You need to exercise, you need to diet, you need to lose 20 pounds. How in the hell do I do either one of those things? Mm -hmm. And then they say, screw it, I can't do it. Right, and they give yeah. up. And yeah. that, that's the biggest issue. We're trying to help people not give up. This is a, a way for people to look at themselves. I mean. I looked at this. I know what my, they use Myers-Briggs. I don't know if you know that, but I know my daughter had, was in high school and she learned what her Myers-Briggs. Right. A lot um, of high school psychology classes offer sort of a survey introduction and this book does too. Mm -hmm. And you actually go to somebody that is trained in, in the Myers-Briggs protocols, my, Myers-Briggs types inventory. They've identified uh, four categories of, uh, Continuums. Of, of personality issues. Right. Personality so, so let's run through facts. what those are. The, the first continuum is, is how are you energized? What energizes you 
in the way that you experience and perceive the world. And it's a single continuum with a one end here and one end here. The, the one end on the left is extroversion. If you are fundamentally energized by being around people, by bouncing ideas off of people, by picking up the energy of the crowd, you fit on the extroverted end mm -hmm. of that. If you're fundamentally energized, meaning re renewed, re-nurtured, refreshed by being alone, by being isolated mm -hmm. away from crowds, that's called introversion. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean, uh, everybody has some of both. They're, they're the most introverted person can have joy and happiness and connectivity in the appropriately selected crowd. Do you walk up to people and talk to them or do you wait for them to talk to you basically? It depends, I mean, on, it depends on if I'm getting paid. <laughs> if I'm getting paid to be on, I'm very extroverted. I can run a meeting, I can circulate at a party, I can meet people. If there's, if there's so if you're not getting paid, you don't me, talk to people? I go sit in the corner and watch. I'm analyzing. <laughs> I'm seeing what's going on and I'm content to do both. But the question for the MBTI is what do I do to nurture me? Right. And I kind of slide back and forth. I'm predominantly extroverted. Mm -hmm. I get energy out of crowds, mm -hmm. but I need downtime. I need time away mm -hmm. from people. I need time when I say I don't want to be responsible for dealing with anybody else's energy. And and I love I love being with people, but mm -hmm. I also I mean, but after a day of being with people and talking all day long right. and and closely in kind of interacting, mm -hmm. I want to go home and just be quiet for an hour or two. That doesn't mean that I'm not extroverted. Right. It just means that if I were home all the time, I'd want to go out and see people. Well, and <laughs> you one, know, it's a balance. One label is not considered to be better than another. No. These, are, these are not judgment values, they're descriptive values. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to figure out is, what am I? What works for me? Mm -hmm. And what you find is, you often match up or pair up with with people from the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So an extrovert who needs to, you know, have a lot of attention will tend to associate with an introvert who pays a lot of attention or who right. doesn't need who doesn't compete the for the floor. The extrovert needs an audience. I need an audience. <laughs> that's right. So so that and that's that's common and I guess you can kind of think of the people that you know, the couples that you know, really do you have two extroverted people in a, in a couple? Some do. Some do. Some do. But it's not common and but this is one of the things that Suzanne leads you through in her book is how do you figure out if you're extroverted by a series of questions. Right. And then the next category. And, and then the, next the second category, category is how do you gather information? How do you take in data from the world around mm -hmm. you and, and filter your perceptions? Mm -hmm. uh, we can walk into a room and immediately see two different things because we have a different filtering system mm -hmm. for processing data. And so one of those is called an S or sensing, that's one end of the continuum, and the other one is called an N for intuitive. intuitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so some of us get a definition of experience by being in touch with our sensory meters, you know, uh, taste, touch, smell, sound, mm -hmm. feel, and, and that's how the data flow comes. Others have flashes, flashes of insight. We get the picture, we get the pattern. Like I am, uh, I'm terrible with visual spatial issues. I can't do puzzles. My family laughs at me because my wife and son can, they sit down and whip through a 500 piece puzzle and I get a little piece that I think ought to fit and I'm trying to hammer it in and make it fit. And it I want to be there for that. I, oh, and it's really frustrating for me. I can't do that. But uh, I, get, I get patterns, flashes of insight mm -hmm for things, and, and it's what I do as a therapist. It's mm -hmm. what I do when I read a book. Uh, I, I remember when uh, The Da Vinci Code came out, mm -hmm. and my wife and her little book group read it, and she was really intrigued by it, and they were going to have their discussion of it, and she handed me and said, you, you want to read this? And I read uh, something like 70 pages, and I called her and said, I know how this plays out, and mm -hmm. I told her what the end of it was. And she said, I hate you, and hung up the phone. <laughs> Because she didn't Intuitive. know the last page. I know, I know. You know but, but the pattern is just there. The, the foreshadowing is there mm -hmm. for me because of my filters. Mm -hmm. But for her, the sensory data, the data that's perceivable, the data that's experiential. What makes us, is are we born like that or do we, we are, develop it, like that? The theory is we are essentially born okay. that way. We, we have the full range, but we are receptive to certain links more than others. It's kind of like uh, vision or hearing. You know, you hear certain mm -hmm. decibels that I don't hear. As you get mm -hmm. old, you lose <laughs> certain ranges of, of hearing decibels. 
uh, or you don't see but colors. it's the same reason why two children in the same household with the same environment right. are completely different. different. They're born with a different perception of everything. So, and so then you get to the third category. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you make decisions? Mm -hmm. Should I stay or should I go? Should I taste this? Should I reject that? Should I, what, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And there's a continuum for that as well. Mm -hmm. And everybody can do all of it, but you have a preferred mode. You right. have a uh, predictable pattern that you use more comfortably. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, you change that part over life. You can evolve over a lifetime, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, but you have to grow into it. You, you can't be mm -hmm. forced into it. And you can learn to turn those switches on. But the two ends are thinking. The two ends are thinking and feeling. Feeling. So, so the thinkers uh, process by being detached and analytical. It's mm -hmm. like talking heads. They sit back. And the feelers gush. They just get these emotional floodings of knowing. I just know. Mm -hmm. They didn't go through and add it all up and get a sum total. That's what a thinker would do. Mm -hmm. The feeler is going to just look at a whole wad of stuff and say, that's going to be this. Well, they walk in the room and they feel like they like this person, mm -hmm. but they aren't exactly sure why. And the thinker usually has all the, the list of why they like that person. Well, and the person that kind of meets in the middle, mm -hmm. that's more feeling, mm -hmm. they feel it, and then they can break it down and backtrack. They can articulate what caused me, what did I see, what mm -hmm. did I experience, who said what, what, where did that come from? On, on this, on that test, I came out even on both of those. Yeah, yeah, because I, mean, I, you can do I them couldn't both. really be categorized in those two different things. So, so remember, we're talking about exercise. How does this matter to exercise? And then right. the last, the last well, um, part of it is, is uh, how you make decisions. Perceiving and judging. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the perceivers delay judgment. They want more information. I need to read another book. I need to talk to another person. I want to keep all my options open. I don't want to commit and make a mistake. <laughs> and the judges are like, snap, I judged. I mm -hmm. know. Uh, my judges wife and I talk like about that all executive, the time. The executives you know kind of go, okay, give me five minutes. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. we're doing this. My wife gets That's... frustrated with me because she says, I don't make decisions the way you do. I don't make decisions that fast. Right. I have to sit with it. I have to feel it. I have to taste it. I have to get information about it. I have to make, and you just say, buy this. And we often, almost always, mm -hmm. get to the same place, mm -hmm. but we get there on a different road. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge then for you working with us and our family, mm -hmm. we need diet and exercise programs, is helped if you know our frame of reference and our orientation. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to recommend uh, an exercise program for Phyllis that she's going to be able to follow and embrace and commit herself to and get a payoff from, mm -hmm. it's going to be different than what you recommend to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I find that groups of people who, who travel together or do uh -huh. things together, we did this test with eight people yes. at, uh, in Tuscany. There were eight of us, and we were. You had to go to Tuscany. We to were in do Tuscany to do the test. Well, my girl, my girlfriend Julie, who's a um, was an Olympic diver the year we didn't go to the Olympics, yeah. is who introduced me to this book. So I'll give her credit. And um, she sat us all down, and, and we all knew what our Myers Briggs, you know, personality types were, or at least in between one or the other. So she gave us our colors. We each had a different color, but we were all going to Tuscany to eat, to sightsee, to ride bikes, to exercise, to hike, to do, to do exercise, but right. we all had a different reason we liked those same things. Right. And so we all had a different color, and it all, as a group, it played out like a family, like everybody had their role. Mm -hmm. Like my role, I mean, you'll listen for this down the line, but my, my color is Quicksilver because... I don't like to exercise for exercise sake. If you can make it look like anything else, if you can disguise it as something else, or I can do two things at once, or I can or I read a book or anything, or if I can be outside, then I'll do it. But if it looks like exercise, forget it. So that's right. my, my personality type is. Well, and, and the reason to use colors, it, it, people, yeah. people get all bollocks up trying to remember, am yeah. I an ENTJ, an ISFP, yeah. a PQRYZ? Mm -hmm. So a color is something that's mm -hmm. pretty easy to remember. And it also, uh, the, the author of this book mm -hmm. has come up with colors to, to identify those Myers-Briggs type categories. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a facilitation. So right. you know uh, a blue, ver like your friend is a gold. Right, Julie, Julie the Olympic diver is a gold. And she, that is, okay, so the, per, the personality type, I have to always look at this, right. is ESJ. So 
extroverted, sensing, and judging. Right. And she goes for a goal, a goal, not gold, but goal, <laughs> and she is very specific about this personality requires very specific um, structure to her exercise. She has a goal in mind. She is going to do every little piece of of exercise that's going to get her to that well, goal. Like competitive swimmers and competitive divers. She's going to How use many thousands form. of repetitions She's of a dive to get your toes pointed exactly right? That would drive me nuts. To make but the splash. For, for her, know. that's like, that's, that's her life. And she yeah. now judges the, the uh, she judged the Olympic trials. So, I mean, she's a wonderful judge, and she looks at, like, I'd play golf with her once, and it was like, I learned more than I'd learn for an entire season, mm -hmm. because she'd tell me everything I did wrong in my stance and correct it. She can take <laughs> a, an uh, exercise apart and make it interesting. Well, that made it interesting for me. But you can tell her, if you're working with her, you say, all right, Julie, you go home and you do 10,000 repetitions of this little thing, you know, this mm -hmm. one eight-ounce curl. You tell me that. I'm going to laugh at you and, and right. go home and not do a single repetition. Right, because Because it's, my it's personality exercise. is not it's gold. Not, that, yeah. that doesn't buy it for me. Right, and I can't, I don't have the same, I don't have the same goals as she does. Right. I mean, her goal is getting to a, a goal like running a marathon or doing a triathlon or doing something that with exercise that may, that juices her up and makes her so excited right. about living, and that doesn't do it for me. Well, I have a son who's a red Okay. And, and so the red is all about adventure and excitement and change and unpredictability and the outdoors. And so he's always hiking and camping and traveling and uh, competing. I mean, he competes with himself and with other people about everything, but without a plan. But they're I mean, usually the life of the party, too. They like, they like sports in teams, basketball, biking, hiking, racquetball, skiing tennis but they love they're quick responders quick learners mm -hmm. and uh, they do have a goal because that helps them focus but they'll put their <laughs> earplugs in and you know and they'll be off in their other world if they're alone but they're going to be they're going to be socializing and being the life of the party while they're exercising right. so they like to be with a group that's fun and they like to go do things and you always want a red on your trip because they'll get you out of the house in Tuscany to go do stuff. Mm -hmm. And they always plan great parties. Right. So you want to have a few reds in your life. And reds are ESP if you're following along. So so we've talked about golds. Right. That's another um, extroverted type. Right. And then reds mm -hmm. are extroverted. And then I'm I'm I picked a bunch of the introverted, even though I'm in the extroverted group. Um, my husband's a green, okay? Green means anything outside. If you can make exercise be outside and be in nature, then he'll do it. It's Tom Sawyer you, here, paint his fence. He is. Well, okay. he was. <laughs> he, he was. He was. He was, was in Hannibal. <laughs> he spent a year being Tom Sawyer when he was 13. But um, but that's an introverted, sensing, perceiving mm -hmm. kind of uh, a personality type. He's not really introverted. I don't know how you can really say he's introverted, but he fits this. And he fits that personality test. He's very outgoing, and I, I you know, so to everyone it isn't else, that he can't be outgoing. Remember, he's it's really how outgoing. He, how he nurtures himself. But how when he, he comes home, he sits and, and calms exactly. down, and, and that's how he he recharges. Because if he's outside in nature doing some repetitive exercise that he doesn't have to pay a whole lot of attention to, his system is re-knitting itself and re-energizing mm -hmm. itself. Right. Then he can come back and join the party. Right. Which is what he needs right. to do. Which is what he does. So Which is why his, he reads as much as he does. Yeah. He can go away in a book. Fast. And then come back. Just like you do. He reads a lot. <laughs> so his activity, he likes active. So if you're green and you want to always be outside when you're exercising and you're ISP, then your act activities that I would suggest for you would be climbing, horseback riding, anything to do with daily living like raking your leaves or running running around and mulching your whole yard or you know that's the kind of exercise they consider exercise so swimming scuba they want to be in the water mm -hmm. looking at nature walking uh, windsurfing anything with the powers of nature and exercise that gets you to a vista so you can see how beautiful nature is mm -hmm. that's a green so the motivation is just being outside smelling perceiving all the things in nature but the things that block you from exercising are you can't go outside. I mean, it's raining. You should live in a good climate. Um, if you don't have any routine planned out, 
you you have to fit it into your routine. You have to plan on it if you're a green. You might you have find, to make it happen. Yeah, you have to make it happen. Right. And you have difficulty finding time to do this, mm -hmm. so you have to set aside time. So those are roadblocks for green. But but green is easy. You just go outside and do something outside. Yeah. So that's one of the um, the introverted types. Saffron is another. Saffron is is a uh, creative, outdoor inspired kind of person. Uh, INP, introverted, uh, intuitive, intuitive mm -hmm. and, and perceiving. Um, perceiving. So they, they like different things. They like cardiovascular machines, dance, hiking, martial arts, skating, running, walking. Their motivation is that they want to have always have a change. They want to have different circumstances. They want to have new things. They, um, they establish a flow in their exercise where they create a rhythm with it and then they decide how they may use music to have rhythm with it, mm -hmm. but they, they feel an internal rhythm in their exercise, whatever that may be. So th the things that hurt them are boredom. If they get bored with something, they're never doing that again. Um, and if they, if they get really involved in their creative mind and doing the things they're doing on a daily basis, they don't schedule time for this. They just ignore it. Now, if they're going to go to a gym, they're going to go to a gym where they don't have to dress up. They just want to just be able to walk in and go and do something and, and leave. So that's, that's kind of one of the things that you, ha you are if you're a, a saffron, mm -hmm. is you, you have to be able to do it on the spur of the moment, but you also have to schedule time where you might miss it. So you could exercise inside, but nature is also important to saffrons right. because they want to be outside being inspired and they get recharged by being inspired. Mm -hmm. So if you're a saffron and somebody told you that you had to go walk on a treadmill every day for an hour, you'd look at them and think they were crazy because you're just not going to do that. Right. That's well, just not part of you. And that's actually how uh, corporations use Myers-Briggs, uh, mm -hmm. HR departments. And a lot of you may have had taken one as a part of trying to get hired or trying to get promoted because they want to match personality types to the demands of the job. And mm -hmm. so to, to put a green inside on a treadmill <laughs> would be destructive if yeah. that's what the job was. But right. to put them outside, uh, carrying things, moving things, uh, exercising mm -hmm. in some way, interacting with people mm -hmm. in that domain is more workable for them. They're gonna be happier, more uh, satisfied workers mm -hmm. and make better contributions to the company in the bottom right. line. Right. So, so our job is to figure out what makes you tick and what kind of exercise is good for you or for you to do it yourself by, by taking the this, test in this, this book. book. And we'll put the, the information on the book up on the, on the website. So uh, we have a couple more colors to go through. Yes. We have, uh, we have blue and we have purple. And we have white. And white. So, so blue is, blue is, is my, one of my, I, I have a really good athletic friend that's a blue and he's he's a lot like like your wife in terms of exercising and and they're they're both blues and their exercise I could I could read what they do for exercise yeah. and know that's them without well, even doing the Myers Briggs. One of the reasons she assigns the color blue is the phrase true blue. Blues uh, do things because it's right to do them. So if mm -hmm. you can get them committed to something mm -hmm. and say this is the right thing or the right way then they are so disciplined but they also have blinders on. Like my wife will commit to a plan because it's somebody convinces her this is what you ought to mm -hmm. be doing and she does it religiously. I mean truly religiously. Yeah. It's like okay I'll go and walk on the treadmill every day for 45 minutes mm -hmm. and she'll figure out a way to make that doable mm -hmm. like uh, get on Netflix and watch uh, a TV show that's mm -hmm. exactly 45 minutes and then every day <laughs> she's down yeah. there from you know 9 to 9:45 watching this show while she's on the treadmill and she has the treadmill set at 5 miles an hour <laughs> on an incline of 3 and I mean that's what she does mm -hmm. and she does it religiously and consistently and perfectly because she's a blue she has to have comfortable mm -hmm. Surrounding Safe. usually in home gyms, not going out, mm -hmm. you know, and then oh, and then having a calming atmosphere, which means watching something on television, listening to music, but being, but being calm. They recharge with routine. Mm -hmm. Routine makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. So my friend gets on a treadmill for three hours Ooh. every day, and he's reading in, a book, watching TV. He watches movies. Mm -hmm. 
or he listens to the news or he reads but not as much because you're moving on a treadmill and he's mm. running most of the time yeah. but this guy's in phenomenal shape and has been his entire life and this is how he does it yeah because i mean it sounds like boring to be a blue but they're probably in the best shape because they internally need to have this routine and he does it the same time every day if you decide to go out to dinner early forget it he's going to be late he's doing his routine so which is commendable and healthy but it's it also is a little obsessive <laughs> but you know he's in a lot better shape than i am and he can't figure out we go to hawaii together we travel together with his uh he's married to julie the gold mm -hmm. and we go to Hawaii and he goes, you want to go to the gym and get on the treadmill and work out? Because he thinks he's helping me like lose weight and be healthy. And I go, are you kidding me? I'm going to go walk on the beach, play in, play in the water and climb that cliff that's right by our hotel. And then I'll come back and I will have done the same exercise. And he's like, yeah, yeah. are they going to cruise ship? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to that's not exercise. <laughs> going to cruise ship and they're always at the gym signing up for the exercise classes. I know. You know? Instead of like walk the deck 500 times. I would walk the deck 500 times. I would never know where the gym was. Because but that's because you're a purple. I'm a purple. And see, we haven't talked about purples yeah. yet. So do you want to talk about yourself I'll, or should I'll I talk about I'll walk the beach for 20 miles. Uh, I'll play tennis as a social activity. I won't jog. I cannot run. Uh, it's so boring to me. People it talk is. about getting on a runner's high. I wouldn't run 200 yards. I'd get so bored. I'd say, this is stupid. Why I never I got, this? I was a runner. I but, never got a runner's high. But I'll run just was for never hours playing tennis. Good. You know, if, yeah. if there's a, a social, interactive, functional, new thing to do. I, I don't plan a lot of stuff. It's very spontaneous. If I'm, if I'm parked somewhere and I've got an hour to kill and I'm in a new neighborhood, I'll go out and walk around and explore. And I walk all the time mm -hmm. for exercise, exploration, entertainment, interaction, but if you assign me to go get on a treadmill and walk, I'd sabotage it. You're an ENJ, and that means royal purple, and the reason they say that is because most of the executives, the CEOs, the COOs of huge companies are ENJs. They're disciplined human beings. They're people who do what you, you're doing. They're energized by being out there. They're energized by keeping their mind really busy. But but they have it's uh, a self-defined discipline. You can't hand right. them a program no and one, say here they won't follow, work the program. You'll never follow somebody else's program. You uh, have I'm to so set it up yourself. I'm so I hate authority. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> typical. So, but I think there's you a have song. To, I hate authority. But. <laughs> the man. So you have to plan exercise. You have to have self-defined goals. Mm -hmm. And then you have to seek others who have expert opinions about this. You're not going to follow them all, mm -hmm. but no, you're going to seek their opinion. Then you're going to choose the ones that you find work for Maybe you. Maybe so I can compete with them. Oh, no, no, I think <laughs> I can do it. You tell me I have to do this, I can do it this way. But, but walking's kind of a repetitious activity. Mm -hmm. And you do that, but you're also, your mind's working all the time. Oh, yeah. So, so for you, this repetition is good, and you set aside time for it. You are going to set aside time for it because, by golly, your mind, your body, and your health is very important because you can't keep running the world if you don't do this. So that's, that's what a purple thing is. I'm a whole like. lot better telling other people to exercise. Yeah, well, you do it every day, so, you know, you're good. I mean, I don't know how you can get much better than that. So anyway, if you were curious about your color, if you were curious about whether this would be something that's useful for you in trying to break that pattern of resisting and rejecting uh, an improved lifestyle for eating, for exercise, get this book and look at it and, and see if you can find your color and see if that will lead you down a path that's more workable and survivable for you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.